What is up? And thank you guys for tuning in. I'm bringing you the first car done at the shop. Uh, it is not necessarily a street car or a race car that some would think that we're going to only work on, but we do like to work on primarily fun cars that we have interest in. So is, as you already know, I do have a Focus ST. Now this car belongs to our friend Trish, and it's also a 2015 Focus ST. It has some minor exterior modifications done to it. It's got a set of coilovers on it, and it has a smoked clutch. This car has about 54,000 miles on it. She did learn how to drive stick on it, and her boyfriend Mike is not very kind to the car either. So we do have a Ford OEM clutch going in it. After doing some research, we were thinking about doing a stage one system on it. However, the stage one clutches from spec, for example, are like twice the price, if not more, and they're not really rated for a whole lot more than what people are getting out of the factory clutches. Now Trish doesn't have any plans of putting a big turbo or auxiliary fuel system or anything like that on this car, so we didn't really find the necessity to do that. Now we were thinking about doing an aluminum flywheel even with the factory clutch. The problem is nobody had one. It didn't matter if it was a Fidenza, a Spec, we could not find one in stock. And a couple of the websites that did show that they had one in stock aren't really reliable sources that I would have gave my five, six hundred dollars to for them to email me ten days later saying that it's on back order. So we just decided to go with OEM uh, parts on this. We're going to put a new slave cylinder in it, new flywheel bolts, flywheel clutch, and it is actually missing a caliper clip here. There might be other things that I'm going to suggest, but I already picked up that caliper clip because I already knew that uh, it was missing. So we're going to replace that. That's kind of unsafe. So we don't want her driving around with her little one Riley and have a brake pad fall out. I don't know if that's what actually happened, but that's what it looks like would happen. So we're not doing it. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to get started. Uh, we did have not moved the toolbox here yet. It's going to go right here. So I did have to go get and rally just a bunch of tools to try to get the job done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is outlay my toolbox, which is gonna be, I'm gonna utilize this half of the bench for, and start moving forward on the rest. All right, now I'm actually gonna get started, but I got my tools laid out. I don't really know what I'm gonna need, so I just kind of brought a wide variety of stuff. Well, I've made two dumb mistakes already. Number one, I did not bring a breaker bar, because why would anybody use a torque wrench to put wheels on? If my Milwaukee half-inch drive impact cannot take your wheels off on setting number three, they were not torqued with a torque wrench. Do not need to be that tight. 100 foot pounds is plenty. This should do it in its sleep. So now I gotta run home just to get a couple tools. So I'm gonna kind of assess the situation, see if there's anything else weird I'm gonna need, and then I'll be back shortly. Danny's here, hey Dan. Hi. All right, so I started tearing into the Focus. Uh, mostly just removed all the plastic shit that was in my way and the driver side drive, driver side drive shaft. That was kind of hard to say. So I got this side all taken apart. I took the fender wells out of both sides just to make life a little bit easier. I have full access to the transmission. All this is holding itself up, which is nice. And now I'm gonna move on to this side where I'm going to take the axle off. I already loosened the nut. I'm gonna start loosening this up. It's kind of a pain to get it out. But then, drop same thing. Drop what I'm gonna call the upper control arm so it can be release off the coilover, hang down low, I can sneak the axle out. Uh, this side I don't think I actually need to sneak the axle all the way out. The other side I think I do because the transmission is going to fall out that way. So this side I just want to make sure I can pop it loose. I might, I might actually just try to pop it loose and not even, and not even loosen that side up. So maybe I'll do that next. All right, I'll bring you an update on the ST in a second. First major streetcar project that's coming to the shop is the TVS Cobra. You guys have probably been following around along a little bit so far, but we are gonna be finishing it at the shop. So Big Tone was nice enough to get the get the towing handled. Big Tone the tow man. Brock Weber supplied the trailer, so thank you for helping us out. But we're gonna get this unloaded, then we're gonna finish working on the ST, putting the clutch and flywheel in it. Doing work. What does your Friday night look like? Status on the Focus. I just cracked the trans off the block and it just reeks of clutch. So it's very apparent that that's the issue. There's clutch uh, material even on the outside and there's not very many places where it could come out of the trans. So the fact that it's on the outside, it's pretty bad. But everything's off of it. Pull the axles out. You already saw all that stuff. Nothing much has changed up here aside from getting to the top bolts. Pull the, took the Symposer tubes off just to be able to work around it easier. Shift leakage is all loose. 
So that's all ready to come off, except for this little collar. I'm having a hard time grabbing that. It's probably because of my gloves. And then I gotta disconnect the hydraulic line to it. And then it's ready to pretty much come out, aside from the motor mount situation, which is gonna be interesting. Great success. Got clutch dust and metal. It looks like the fill plug's leaking over here, so we're gonna investigate that a little further. There's some trans fluid down in that. The flywheel is blue. <laughs> she got hot, holy cow. Yeah, good thing we got new flywheel bolts because those are probably junk. Crazy. We're gonna get the flywheel off. We'll show you guys some comparisons on what these look like on the bench. It's kind of hard to tell how thin this one is, but you can see all the molten material that is on it, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty disgusting, but it's pretty cool. I still have dirt on my face. Nope, I made it worse. Um, so we're gonna get that off, and that's the last thing. We'll probably try to get, I don't know how much farther we're gonna try to get it back together tonight. It's probably a good time to call it a night, um, lower the car back down and just leave it, and come back in the morning and finish it. But we're definitely gonna show you guys the comparison between the new and the old before we leave. So I will show you guys that just right now. I don't think I've actually seen a clutch smoked as bad as this one. <laughs> so let's just look. This is the new one. Lots of thickness there. It's on the rivet there. Material's the same. This one you can't even see the grooves that was in it at one point. There's one little one up there, kinda. <laughs> All the plastic on this one has been melted out of the disc. You can see where all the plastic should be on the inside. It's all gone. She's toast. Pressure plate. Now the pressure plate is actually rather consistent. I mean, it's, it's messed up and it's blue and it got really, really hot, but it doesn't look as bad as the flywheel does. Obviously the new one looks fantastic. And uh, and uh, we don't have a T56 bit, T55 Torx bit that we need to get the flywheel off, so we'll have to get that comparison to you in the morning. We're kind of stuck. I thought they were Allen bolts. I should have known because I had the parts, but I didn't check, so that's my fault. But that's right, it's 11 o'clock tonight anyway. We still gotta clean up, put the tools back in order, and get out of here. Full day tomorrow. Full day tomorrow working on everything, so. Thank you for tuning in to part two on the ST clutch flywheel replacement. So we did finally this morning get the uh, flywheel off this car. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start today. We had a visitor come by, picked up a hat. Thank you, Scott, for the support, and thank you for keeping a lookout for the uh, parts that we were talking about. So really appreciate the support that we're getting from everybody. But let's move on to the ST. Removed everything, everything's brake cleaned in here. So this is all cleaned up, ready to start reassembly. It's kind of dirty, but there's a ton of clutch material, so it's kind of hard to make it perfect. All right, let's compare the old parts versus the new parts, because these old ones are scorched. Um, this car had no clutch pedal whatsoever when it got here. I could, in fact, switch the gears while the car was running without even touching the clutch. That's how bad this clutch is. So now, after doing research, as you saw in the earlier part of the video, there really isn't any reason to upgrade this car as far as clutch is concerned. For twice the price, it wasn't really worth the benefits. But let's just see how bad this one got chewed up. So this is the new one. A Focus ST uses a dual mass flywheel, as you can see here. There's a series of springs and every fun stuff on the inside, weights, makes the car drive smoother. You don't feel the shutter of the engine, and it's just kind of nice. A lot of people eliminate this, but they kind of regret it from what I saw. This is... The one that we just took out. Now all these little spots are all hot spots from contact with the clutch that got superheated. You can see that it's blued around the outside edge, which is super hot. But the most important thing is how hot the flywheel got. Look at this bluing. That baby was smoking hot. I mean, that is, that is torch. That's pretty impressive, actually. So this one obviously does not have that. We already showed you the stock Comparison between the disc, this one's all chewed up, beaten up. Pressure plate, now that it's out of the car, looks significantly worse. 
Looks a lot more like the flywheel does. And then the new one's all good. So we are going to, and we got a new slide cylinder we're gonna put on here. So the next thing we're gonna do is clean up the trans a little bit, brake clean the new components, get the flywheel torqued on, clutch installed, everything there, and then slam the trans back on. It took us about six hours to get it apart. I'm, I'm gonna estimate two and a half to get it all back together and on the ground. Uh, it's just how it works. So we're gonna get back at it and we'll show you guys an update once it's done and maybe even take out a little test drive once it's driving, see what it actually drives like with a clutch that works. All right, so we are wrapping up the ST. We are actually putting a plug on the lift because we haven't finished the wiring. You might have seen in the videos in the background. However, we ran into an issue right at the end of the ST, as always, per standard <laughs> operating procedure. Um, the clutch line is leaking at one of the junction points, and we tried it in multiple different junction points that, you know, by piecing the line together, and it leaked either way. So I just have a Ford line coming. I just ordered a new one and that will be it. The clutch is in, everything's done. Everything's back together 100% aside from the clutch line. So kind of sucks that we have to wait two, three days for the last piece, but such is life. Can't really do much. Can't put the cold air intake on and stuff until the clutch line is done, but that's all she wrote. So next update will be just test driving this. That'll wrap up this video. Um, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, just subscribe down below. Check out what we got coming up next because we are going to focus more on streetcar stuff, not Focus ST stuff. Uh, although we do have a couple videos on the Focus ST. We're going to wrap up this TBS build. We're going to get the 94 Cobra started. And we're going to get Dan's car running good enough so we can actually do a full review on it because it's been on and off since we finished it in the last video. So if you haven't watched those ones yet, check out the playlist of all the videos on his car right here. Uh, other than that, Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you very much. All right, wrapping it up today. Um, I just want to show you guys that the ST moves on its own. The ST's done. The TVS Cobra is on the lift officially. It's gonna probably stay here. We ordered a bunch of parts for it. I'm gonna pull the white one in here. She's picking that one up tomorrow. Drives awesome. I put 50 miles on the new clutch. Me and Big Tone went to Racine to get some stuff out of the notch to finish the 94 Cobra project, which we are also working on kind of simultaneously as all this is going on. Can't have your hands on just one at a time. It's being kind of hard to film. But this one's done. First, first car done at Streetcar Shenanigans Shop. There's a clutch flywheel, slave cylinder, clutch line, which causes a failure overall. got coilovers on it this is Trisha's ST it's got a lot of exterior modifications it's got a set of BC coilovers on it it's got a blow-off valve on it you'll hear in a second other than that it's pretty much factory oh it does have a Flowmaster exhaust which sounds actually pretty decent it's still warm it's got some other check engine lights and issues that we might address later But it's a fun car. I mean, obviously, I have one, so I like it. But it does have a very loud blow off valve. And a pretty good exhaust note. But this is what it couldn't do when it got here. Right here. So she's pumped to get her car back. She hasn't had it with a properly operating clutch in probably a month or so. The, what we ended up finding once we put the clutch and flywheel back in this car was that the line was leaking and must have caused all sorts of slipping issues. So I think that's what caused the premature failure more than uh, her boyfriend admitting that he beats on it and her admitting that she learned how to drive stick on it. 
Uh -uh. But it's good to go. Now it's going to get a nice detail and bath because it's dirty. They took it on vacation. My opinion, I think the plastic dip should come off the wheels, but it's not my car to make that decision. But it did get stamped. So thank you guys for watching the ST video. Uh, subscribe down below. I'm not sure how much more ST content we're gonna have in the immediate future. I do wanna put an intercooler, charge pipes, and blow off valve on mine, um, along with an AP. So we'll have that coming up eventually, but as of right now, I don't have a bunch of ST work lined up. We obviously have a lot of Mustang stuff. So we're gonna go back to the Mustangs. We're gonna change gears back to our roots, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.